Kelly Stewart, we are going to eat a, a very nice Hokkien meat. More like a breakfast food or sometimes brunch. Hokkien refers to the name of the cultural groups under Chinese, while me refers to noodles. A typical bowl of um, Hokkien meat consists of uh, yellow noodles, vermicelli noodles, and likely blanche, and they um, assemble the noodle with hard boiled eggs, pork ribs, uh, shrimps, and completed with a spoonful of chili paste. We mix everything first, and then you can taste the soup. <clears throat> wow. And this is the mantis shrimp, which is why this salt so famous. You want me to make the slurp sound? Next up is Ravi Devi and his wife who have been cooking Indian appam since 1974. From 7.30, we started our fire here. I prepared the fire. Oh. <laughs> From 7.30 until uh, around 11 to 12 o'clock, we non-stop we keep on going. And this is what we're doing, the egg, sugar, all mixed together. Okay. Started the, the clay pot. That was the original one on the both sides we're doing. But now the clay pot not lasting at those days. So this is the med, um, pan from India, from Bombay. Oh, okay. Especially for appam, non-sick pan. You must make it crispy. All right. When you eat, you can feel the crunchiness. And fluffy in the middle. And fluffy in the middle. Yeah. Having tasted authentic Indian food in Georgetown, we are now heading to Balik Pulau for some Asam Laksa. Asam laksa. Uh, this particular stall is so special that they make uh, their own noodles and they are usually springier and bouncier as compared to other uh, places. So they are assembling a bowl of asam laksa. It has got onions, cucumber, lettuce, pineapple and mint leaves inside. Asam laksa is believed that uh, it's originated from uh, Peranakan cuisine. So Peranakan refers to the intermarriage between the Malay descendants and the Chinese. So we have one bowl of asam laksa over here. It's homemade rice noodles. So it has a chewier texture as compared to other uh, places. Yeah. I couldn't find a table. That's why I'm standing. A short ferry ride across to the mainland is a hidden gem filled with the flavor of Malaysia. We are here at uh, Sungai Dua. Butterworth, we are about to try the famous mi udang over here at our garden. So, other apa yang special? Kat mi udang. Mi. So mi udang is a type of prawn noodles served with a very thick and rich seafood broth. Um, you can actually add all these fresh prawns, crabs, shrimps, and all that uh, into your mi udang. It's famous for its thick and rich broth, which the recipe has been passed down since 40 years, 50 years back. It has a hint of peanut inside, and the flavors are fully accentuated from the seafood. You can also add in your homemade pickled chilies, but they're really, really hot, so be careful with that. Wow, that's really hot. So today's last stop is Hamidia, famous for serving nasi kanda for more than 100 years. <laughs> A usual plate of nasi kanda would consist of boiled egg, fried chicken, and veggies, and um, drenched with plenty of uh, curries over there. We don't buy commercial spices and cook our curry, we do our own. Oh, okay, pounding yeah. and all that. We are pounding everything, that's, you know. There's upstairs full. Uh, you have to go to the next shop. The marriage between a Malay and Indian are known as the Mama. So um, the Malay learned the use of all these various types of herbs and spices from the Indians. It's the cultural mix that makes life here in Penang so spicy. 
But as for me, I'm stuffed. I'm heading home for a nap. This film was made possible by a grant from Think City. Team 108 from Singapore generously provided a Sanquin microphone, Genlex speakers, and a Fireface interface for the post-production. And Canon Malaysia provided a 5,000 lumen projector to make it possible to screen the films throughout Georgetown during the Georgetown Festival. You can find out more at www.oxley.com. This is one of my favourite dishes. So first I'm going to make the marinade. I've got here a good quality oyster sauce. Now this is going to provide sweetness with the duck. To this I'm going to add two tablespoons of a good rice wine. So next I'm going to add two tablespoons of light soy sauce. So give that a good stir. And then I'm going to add groundnut oil. And this is going to just help the duck sort of cook because I want to roast this duck nicely. And now, the special ingredient that makes this marinade just come alive with flavour, and that is Chinese five spice powder. So I'm going to add a good tablespoon of this, and then you just give that a stir. So now, in with the duck breast, and then just basically turn to coat the duck breast in the marinade. Leave it to marinade in the fridge for a while and then roast on a baking tray at 180 degrees for about 20 minutes. My duck's ready, time to prepare the vegetables. I'm just going to steam this pak choy in a bamboo steamer and these are going to provide a lovely crunch against the juicy crispy duck. So that doesn't need to steam for very long at all. Just the sauce to make with the rest of the duck marinade. Heat it up in the wok until it's thick and bubbly. Right, that's lovely. So I'm just going to take it off the heat and we're ready to plate up. Cut the duck into medium-sized slices and serve the steamed pak choy and some rice on the side. Then drizzle over the sauce to serve. And that is my Cantonese-style roast duck on rice. <laughs>